Sarah and I'm the Tudor Travel Guide and welcome to the Tudor Travel Guide's A to Z of Tudor Places and today we're going to be exploring Acton Court in Gloucestershire. Acton Court is an exquisite example of a courtier's house from the early Tudor period. Now I'll say more about that in a moment but probably the thing that makes Acton Court stand out from the crowd is the fact that even today the house is in its raw state and this makes it one of the most authentic Tudor properties in England. Now the Manor House, for those of you who like a bit of geography, is located in the village of Iron Acton and that is in the Vale of Barclay about 15 kilometres northeast of Bristol which is one of the major cities in the southwest of England. Roll back time, during the Tudor period Acton Court was owned by the Points family. The original manor was constructed in the 13th century and the manorial complex contained three ranges of buildings which were all squeezed into the confines of a moat which entirely surrounded the property. The person we so most associate with Acton Court today is Nicholas Points. Now, he was alive during the reign of King Henry VIII. His grandfather had added to the property, he'd been a man of some substance and had served successfully under Henry VII, but it was Nicholas who as a young man was ambitious, well-connected and successful, and at the time of his inheritance was closely connected to Henry VIII's first minister Thomas Cromwell. He was also a personal friend of Richard Cromwell and Richard Rich. Boo! His. Now, all the available evidence suggests that in 1535, in anticipation of a visit by the King and Queen, Nicholas Points undertook an extensive building campaign and that lasted until his death in 1556. But as no building records survive, the actual precise date of this redevelopment project is based on archaeological and not historical evidence. That includes such things as tree dating of tree ring samples which have been taken from the roof timbers of the house and they gave a felling date of 1535 and this of course ties in precisely with the royal visit to Acton Court scheduled for Saturday the 21st to Monday the 23rd of August. Now to accommodate the King and Queen, Points had an entire Eastern medieval kitchen range demolished and instead he built an accommodation block that was fit for royalty, including many features which were considered de rigueur for the time. Now the near tragedy of Acton Court is that it was only in the 1970s that his true historical significance came to light. By that time it was a wreck, it was close to collapse, but thankfully for us, a whole ton of conservation work has been done since. And although we have lost some of Points' original redevelopment work, the one range that survives, the most important range to survive, is that East Range built to accommodate Henry and Anne. So a little bit of context for you. In 1535, Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn were undergoing a three and a half month long summer progress which took them through great swathes of Oxfordshire, Berkshire, Gloucestershire, Hampshire, Wiltshire etc. And about midway through the progress they came to Acton Court. And of course they were accommodated in this fabulous East Range. Now unfortunately the layout of the original ground floor chambers has been lost since for many years Acton Court was leased out to tenors, tenant farmers and it was used as a farmhouse. However, it is likely that Anne Boleyn was lodged here on the ground floor beneath the King's lodgings as has been the case at Thornbury Castle where the couple had just come from, fashionable in its day. However, the first floor suite remains largely untouched and that consists of three great chambers. We have a presence chamber first with a huge oriel window initially sighted directly across opposite the king's throne and canopy of estate. Beyond that there would have been a privy chamber or a 
dining chamber, which would have been used privately by the king for dining and entertaining. And then beyond that, his bedchamber, which also contained this large window which overlooked the formal gardens. And we even have Henry's original garderobe, or toilet. It is incredible to look upon it and think that the King of England once sat there on the lavatory. Extraordinary. So the wow factor of Acton Court, in my opinion, is its raw authenticity. That takes your breath away because it is unencumbered by later alterations and developments by those pesky Georgians and Victorians. It's been stripped of internal furniture and so your imagination can really run wild and you do get this wonderful sense of flow of public to private chambers. But the feature, the outstanding feature of the house is an utterly exceptional painted frieze which runs around the upper wall of the middle of the privy chamber. That is contemporary to the building of the East Range and was certainly created to impress the royal guests. It's completed an antique work and is thought to have been executed by a painter of considerable talent, possibly of French or Italian origin. And if you are ever lucky enough to visit on the ground floor, you might want to search out for a little bit of Tudor graffiti scratched into a windowsill and dated 1589. Oh, amazing. Now, I like to give these properties my own Tudor Rose rating out of five. For historical importance, I would give Acton Court four. For its sheer wow factor, another four Tudor roses. Its authenticity has to be five. The thing that possibly lets Acton Court down is its accessibility, where I only give it one star. Unfortunately, Acton Court is only open for very specific and limited dates throughout the year. But if you get a chance to visit, then I highly recommend it. Perhaps you might pop along to the Acton Court website at www.actoncourt.com and check out when it is next due to open. You will love it. So I hope you've enjoyed our brief eight minute exploration of Acton Court. I'm Sarah, the Tudor Travel Guide, and I look forward to coming back very shortly with our next property, part of our A to Z of Tudor Places. Until then, all that remains for me to say, of course, is happy time travelling. Mm -hmm.